What's up, people? Welcome back to the show. What show? What exactly is it that I'm doing here? Yeah, you're wondering. It's been a while we got together. I grew some hair, got some facial hair. I'm, I'm going back to my roots. I just wanted to be in a metal band, smoke weed, drink, hang out. And suddenly I got involved in the stock market. How did all this happen? You know, I was doing stand-up comedy one day, and I don't even know if I ever told you the whole story about how this whole sordid career got started. I'm doing stand-up comedy one day, and some prick fuck comes up to me at the end of the show wearing a suit. I'm thinking, hey, this is my big moment. This guy must be an agent. He wants to talk to me. You know, he had somebody else introduce me. Somebody else brought me over to him. I'm thinking, oh, this is big time. Big time. He turned out to be some stockbroker. He's like, hey, you're a funny guy. Why don't you come to my firm and use your sense of humor to sell stocks? I got no money. I'm selling grilled cheese sandwiches out of Grateful Dead shows to pay for my tickets. Yeah, think about it. Uh, so, there I go. I'm like, what, what's it all about? He's like, I just come up to Long Island. I'm like, Long Island? Why Long Island? He's like, ah, oh, we in our office is out in Long Island. I should have known right there that it was probably some sort of shady business. So anyway, next thing you know, I'm selling stock. I'm selling glow-in-the-dark license plates to people off cards, telling them Joe DeSimone or whatever the hell name I had, calling them up with one, yeah, you like stocks? I got this great company. They make glow-in-the-dark license plates. Mr. Jones, pick up 50,000 shares. It's only 30, it's only 20 cents. It's going to $5, guaranteed. I mean, it was almost, pretty much as corrupt as that. The next thing you know, somebody else wanted to hire me away to go work at their new firm. They talked to me about IPOs. I'm like, IPO? What the hell's an IPO? Long story short, after learning about how awful and disturbing those industries were, I left and started trading my own account at a buddy's firm. And I did pretty well, okay? And that's the reason I can joke around now. And I don't, I, I mean, the last three or four years of my life have been, no, actually, it's, I took a break in the middle there. When decimalization came, decimalization, decimalization, is that how you even say that? Decimalization. I can't even get it out of my brain. When they went from fractions and they dumbed down America to the point where they thought that we couldn't figure out fractions anymore. They want to try to save the common investor? No. That was to destroy the industry that I came to know and love of day trading and momentum trading and making eights and quarters and halves and dollars. Now I got to look at pennies ticking back and forth. No point. So I left the business when that came on and I never should have came back because I had taken my account. Now let's assume I had $3,000 in an account and I made and I turned that into a hundred grand. What's the percentage return on that? So let's assume I had 30 grand and I turned that into a million dollars in about two and a half, three years. What's the percentage gain on that? Is that a, um, so 30 grand to 60 grand would be 100% return. So doing the math, is that a 7,000% return or whatever? So I did pretty well, okay? Now, the stupid thing is after the market crashed, I decided to hang on to some stuff, and I got stubborn thinking I knew about what these companies did. And I uh, decided to hang on to some losers and watch them go to zero. Thankfully, I had a few stocks that I held short that went to zero to offset some of that. But And then I came back to the trading world when I shouldn't have. I think my attitude was wrong. And maybe because of the fact that I took such a beating that I could never get that same courage and confidence back in the market. And all along, even when I was making money, I had guys sitting there with headsets, and I would tell people when I was selling out of stocks just for this iron, the irony of it all that it would always go up after I got out. And you know what, I'm gonna cut the story short because I, I've gone on, I think I've told this story before, but the, the bottom line is, I do these videos, right? And I get this hate mail. People call me a scammer. Call me a dick, asshole, arrogant, okay? Uh, my favorite, one of my favorites is that I'm a wannabe New Yorker. I probably live in North Carolina somewhere with my fam, with my parents. <laughs> I don't even know what to say to that one. It's fantastic. No, I'm really from Brooklyn. And uh, also this, you know, as an intelligent man, I find myself as 
fairly intelligent because I've been surrounded by people that are not intelligent and I think I'm smarter than those people so and I've done well for myself and I could speak intelligently when I want to I could use big words like the SAT I got a 1260 on my SAT what does that mean nothing nothing at all what I can do is I can help people because I do know how to find good opportunities in the stock market but what I've come to realize is that nobody cares nobody cares what I have to say because even though I've given some recommendations and whether or not you think it's a scam or whatever whatever the whatever the whatever the, the, the thing that you might think nobody cares because half the time I tell people about something and I, I come back a week later it seems like maybe one person's done it I talk to what we got a hundred or so people on here we had 5,000 10,000 people at one time listening you guys are all just waiting for me to just wig out freak out just bang shit I know but what it really came down to is that I wanted people to enjoy and exploit me for this phenomenon that goes on in my stock market world. And now it's translated into picking NCAA uh, teams. Uh, I, I, I went over six yesterday, which is kind of hard to do. Yeah. So today probably will be a better day. Um... I think I got a little bit off track. The bottom line is, there's guys out there legitimately charging $30, $40, sometimes $200. I've seen one guy charging $399 a month for stocks. And all he does, the same kind of setup. He's got a live chat room. He's got a... It's fancier looking. You can, he talks over the charts, he does webinars, explains his situations. Now, I know, personally, that I give winners in my chat room, okay? And the reason I keep it for free is because I'm just dying for people to just come and see. Because I look at this as a bigger picture. I know something good's going to happen, go, go my way. And I think that... The curse that is in, uh, around me is f involving money it has to do with the kleptomania that I had as a child. I used to just rob things. I couldn't stop. I hung out with bad kids when I was, and they were doing it, and I just thought it was fun. The exhilaration of getting through the door, just like Jane's Addiction says. Where's that song? Let me put that song on. Um, Uh, let's see. Okay, I don't have it for you. Oh well, too bad. Let's put uh, let's put some old school. Right? Anyway, so what have we learned? What have we learned, really? We haven't learned anything. What I was trying to say originally with this uh, video. Maybe this is the reason that you don't listen to me. I'm wearing a wig, talking about drug use, and all sorts of nonsense. Why listen to me? So even though I've had a, a pretty bad run at, of as of late, but that's only personal. If it wasn't for the quid, I would have made 100% last year on my portfolio. So I know you can't exclude that, but you know, whenever they give all these technical data on the stock market. They always say excluding this, excluding that. Well, excluding the quid, I had a really great year last year. And 2008 was pretty super also, if you think about it. I sold at the high. I got out of the stock market in, what was it? October of 2008? No, sorry. October of 2007. I sold all my stocks. Why? Because I had a feeling that this housing bubble and was a loser, but there was going to be a looming crash finally. So, if you think about it, I did all right. I mean, I'm not making four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars a year, but all right, we're getting on to the ten minute mark. Why don't you come to the website? I'm going to make videos all day because I need to just get some stuff out there. And I, whether or not you can sit through this for ten minutes, God bless you.